Oh, and welcome back uh, to the Unite Global Summit. We are now uh, very quickly moving towards the end of what have been two very intense days of discussions. And uh, I am very honored to be chairing this closing session along with uh, my esteemed colleague from the U US uh, Congress, uh, the Honorable Donna Shalala. Uh, but we will be starting off uh, before passing the floor um, to the Honorable Representative. Uh, by listening to a pre-recorded message that uh, we have received uh, because Dr. Tedros unfortunately could not join us. Uh, as you know, Dr. Tedros Gabriezus is the acting World Health Organization Director General. He was elected at the 70th uh, World Health Assembly in May 2017 and was the is the first person from the WHO African region to serve as WHO's Chief Technical and Administrative Officer. Before elected DG of the WHO, Dr. Tedros was Ethiopia's Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, from 2012 into, to 2016. And in this capacity, he led the negotiations of the Addis Ababa Action Agenda, in which 193 countries committed to provide the necessary funding to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Most notably, to all of us around the world, Dr. Tedros has been leading the WHO response to the COVID-19 pandemic, working with countries and partners to provide guidance on preparedness and response actions, um, generate data to support research and treatment development, and financing local mechanisms. We will share Dr. Tedros's message to the UNITE Global Summit now. Excellencies, dear colleagues and friends, I'm delighted to be able to join you for today's virtual global summit. Over the last two decades, the world has come together in an unprecedented effort to control infectious diseases. Malaria deaths have halved. AIDS-related deaths have fallen by two thirds and we have made significant progress against many neglected tropical diseases, but we still have a long way to go. Despite all the effort and billions of dollars spent, progress remains dramatically uneven. Large numbers of people are still not being reached with prevention and treatment. HIV, tuberculosis, malaria, viral hepatitis and neglected tropical diseases still kill millions of people every year. From the outset, the fight against infectious diseases has been hampered by social, legal, and economic barriers. Today, huge funding gaps remain. The COVID-19 pandemic has reminded the world that infectious diseases are not just a problem for the poor. Our lack of preparedness globally, including in some of the wealthiest economies, has taught us a harsh but critical lesson. Funding preparedness, prevention, control, and management of infectious diseases is not cost. It's an investment in social, economic, and political stability. Of course, with infectious diseases and all diseases, those who are already vulnerable suffer the most due to poverty, displacement, being trapped in violence, marginalization, or sometimes being young or elderly, pregnant, undernourished, or living with underlying conditions. All of us are vulnerable at some point in our lives. And as we have been reminded by this pandemic, our fates are intertwined. This is why we must address the systemic and structural barriers that hamper access to prevention, testing, and treatment services, especially for the most vulnerable populations. These barriers include addressing stigma and discrimination, fostering community empowerment, addressing violence, and reviewing and revising laws that criminalize behaviors. At the same time, 
we need to help countries move closer to universal health coverage by ensuring that all people have access to the health services they need without facing financial hardship. As well as establishing robust health financing systems, this means building up a qualified workforce and assuring adequate supplies of affordable, safe and effective medicines and health products so that when they are needed, the shelves are not bare. Parliamentarians play a critical role in building this critical policy change. We congratulate the UNITE Network for its renewed commitment to infectious diseases, including the new statement keeping the SDGs in sight amidst COVID-19, adapted by this summit. With this statement, we strongly welcome parliamentary commitment to supporting investments in research, to accelerating work on the sustainable development goals and the achievement of universal health coverage, to assuring global and equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics, to prioritizing health promotion and infectious disease prevention, and to empowering people and communities. Political leadership makes a real difference. UNITE can convene parliamentarians and make these issues understood by a wider audience of policy makers. UNITE has a critical role in working directly with parliamentarians in different countries to build support for a public health approach to ending the spread of HIV, sexually transmitted infections, drug dependence, viral hepatitis, TB and other infectious diseases. WHO is committed to working with parliament, parliaments and with the UNITE network to accelerate progress against infectious diseases to achieve the targets in the sustainable development goals. Last year, the Interparliamentary Union adopted a global resolution on universal health coverage committing to leverage the power of parliaments to make health for all a reality. Excellencies, dear colleagues and friends, I will leave you with three areas that demand our attention. First, we need to continue to build and strengthen partnerships, not only within the health sector, but across sectors. We need parliaments and parliamentary networks like UNITE to work with us. No country can defeat this pandemic alone. Second, we need your support to prioritize investment in research and new technologies to strengthen capacities to implement public health interventions and to advocate for equitable access to new technologies and life-saving interventions, including, hopefully, a vaccine. In particular, we urge parliamentarians to advocate for their government's participation in the COVAX facility, so that if and when we have a vaccine for COVID-19, it's available to all countries equitably. Third, we need to invest in preparedness and in health systems, not only for future pandemics, but also for maintaining the essential health services that may be badly disrupted during emergencies. As this pandemic and many other emergencies have shown, even the wealthiest countries can have their health systems overwhelmed. That's why countries with already overstressed systems need assistance now before the next crisis strikes. My friends, too often preparedness is seen as cost. In reality, investing in preparedness and health is not only saving lives, but also protecting economies 
and the cohesiveness of society. As parliamentarians, you play a critical role in holding your governments accountable for the commitments they make. As a former parliamentarian myself, I know this very well, and I count on parliamentarians to play their role. Lives depend upon you. I thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Tedros, for providing the message. And now, without further ado, I am now honored to, to introduce to all of you Congresswoman Donna Shalala, who I would like to thank in advance, not only for honoring us with her presence, her presence but also for the patience, because we have gone over time. Uh, so thank you in advance. Uh, Congresswoman Shalala was nominated by President Bill Clinton to serve as Secretary of Health and Human Services at the HHS in 1993 and held that position for the longest period in U.S. history. In 2008, President Bush selected uh, her as uh, the recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedmen, the nation's highest civilian award. Congresswoman Shalala has been named one of America's Best Leaders by U.S. News and World Report in 2005, received the Nelson Mandela Award for Health and Human Rights in 2010, and was inducted uh, into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 2011. Congresswoman Shalala now serves as the representative for Florida's 27th District, which includes the city of Miami and surrounding municipalities in Miami-Dade County. And she is the newest member of the Unite Global Parliamentarians Network to End Infectious Diseases. Congresswoman Donna Shalala, it is a true honor to have you on board. Thank you so much. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ricardo. I'm uh, very happy to be a new member and to recruit my colleagues, uh, both here in the United States as well as in uh, Canada. Uh, and I want to thank uh, the Unite Network um, and particularly uh, a shout out to my colleagues at the University of Miami. Uh, for their important uh, interventions. I want to acknowledge uh, the Director General of the World Health Organization. He should be getting combat pay. He has the most difficult job in the world at this uh, point in world history. No person anywhere on this earth is safe unless we're all safe from infectious diseases. As you have repeated over and over again in your panels, the fundamental premise of UNITE um, is that diseases have no borders, they respect no sovereignty, and they don't respect wealth or poverty. We are all in this together. I am well aware that you're all wondering what on earth is happening in the United States. Let me make you a promise. After the election in November, in early 2021, when the new president takes office, the United States will return to the World Health Organization with its resources, its scientific expertise, but it will return as a partner with all of the countries in the world. But what have we learned over the last uh, few months and over the decades before that? First, we've learned that the world was not prepared for a pandemic, even though we have discussed this for years in our parliaments, um, in uh, our state houses, uh, in our national governments, and in the scientific um, and policy literature. We were simply not prepared for a pandemic. We have isolated diseases before in country after country, and in some cases, um, by disease like HIV AIDS, where we have a treatment and have worked very hard. We worked hard on childhood vaccines, on malaria and on TB, but we've never had a pandemic quite like this one. And we were not prepared, even though that infrastructure has been discussed um, over the decades. Second, Universal health coverage of high quality was by itself not enough. Wealthier countries with excellent coverage 
and deep infrastructure still struggled during this pandemic. Third, we actually know what to do. Public health recommendations were pretty clear, but very hard to implement without widespread public and political acceptance and behavioral consensus. We found it was very difficult to get people to comply even when political leaders told them what was necessary. Fourth, the anti-science movement in the world and around the world continues to take its toll. Hundreds of thousands of people died unnecessarily. And we have seen this anti-science virus, and it is a virus, crisscross the world. I remember during the 1990s when we struggled with AIDS and with stigma, that it was actually um, not the beginning, but at least a piece of this anti-science uh, uh, movement. It, it will continue to haunt us, I believe, for decades to come. Fifth, clear coordinated communications from political leaders standing with science leaders around the world is critical. Um, I had a rule that no politician would stand up without the scientist and the scientists would talk about the science. The great public health experts in the United States, I asked them to put on their white coats because people in my country trusted doctors and nurses. And to the extent that they were dressed appropriately, it meant the politicians should move out of the way. It was called the Shalala rule because it reinforced the issue that it wasn't political, it was about their health. Finally, leadership matters, which all of you know, but it matters only if political leaders work together, including scientific coordination, including ethical and equitable distribution of resources, including treatments and vaccines. Political leaders have to speak with the same voice. It does no good if we speak by political parties as opposed to leaders of our country. That single voice, consistent, well-coordinated with the scientific leaders and the public health leaders and the medical leaders in our countries make all the difference. So we've learned a lot painfully. Surviving at a world means linking arms. If we ever, ever learn that lesson, we need to learn it now. This world will not survive in a fair and equitable way. We will not survive no matter how wealthy we are or how poor we are without this kind of clear communication, linking arms, and understanding that we're all in this together. I am proud to join the Unite uh, Network and to recruit my colleagues. I'm proud to be here with all of you today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Congresswoman uh, and Shalela. And um, if I may just ask uh, one question, taking this opportunity uh, of having you live, um, and of course, and speaking on behalf of the whole board at the Unite Network, saying that uh, we are tremendously honored that you will you have offered to your time and expertise to help us grow as a network also, not only in the United States and Canada, hoping that our efforts will then grow across the globe. But you mentioned very important messages uh, and uh, you mentioned that leadership matters, but at the same time, we need to uh, link arms uh, responding to the current global health threats. And you building up on your experience uh, in the 90s, uh, dealing with, for example, HIV AIDS medicines, when in a way there was a lot of criticism of the lack of global response, uh, of lack of solidarity, uh, a rise in a certain way of nationalism in the face of a global health crisis. Today, uh, do you think that there are lessons to be learned from those times 
uh, in terms of the global pandemic and uh, the aftermath of that pandemic, especially now that we're seeing that even parliamentarians and Congresses and Senates and in, in parliaments around the world are actually willing to have a more multilateral view, but their constituents are the ones saying that they have to think more of themselves, about their own constituents, about their own country before thinking of others. What kind of um, message would you convey to these high level leaders and politicians around the world dealing with these dilemmas and making a case in a way of the virtues of multilateralism and of global solidarity? You know, some of this uh, comes from our own experience and the education of our populations that we literally are in this together and that the de diseases cannot be stopped at our borders. We can shrink them with our behavior, but at the end of the day, if we're going to have a, a global economy, we have to work together on these diseases. and. Uh, uh, and we have as much responsibility to look inward as we do outward, because we have a responsibility to educate our own generations about um, about diseases. Um, and, you know, it, during the AIDS epidemic, we used every bit of social media because we wanted to educate generations. And so we used rock stars uh, and rappers. Um, because it was important that the younger generation, they got it first. They really changed their behavior. Uh, and it was because of who spoke to them. So uh, when I talk about consistency, it's not just parliamentarians, it's using everything at our disposal. And in a world of social media, that has to be a very consistent. Our biggest danger is the internet. People go for second and third opinions, and there's lots of misinformation on the internet. How to filter that, how to educate younger people about being part of a global world. I have great faith in the younger generation, and I hope we don't stop educating them and bringing them in as part of our decision making. Well, Congresswoman Shalala, it's been a true inspiration. Thank you so much for joining us at the Unite uh, Global Summit 2020, and most importantly on the Unite Network. And we look very much forward on behalf of the board to working directly with you, helping us grow and ending infectious disease as a global health threat. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. I thought I'd uh, have a lighter moment here to introduce you to my new, uh, my new dog who was found on the streets of Miami. And- uh, Oh, please do. Present him to the world. <laughs> it's a him. He was found right. running around on the streets, and uh, he needed a name, so I've named him Fauci for the great Tony Fauci. All right. <laughs> well, then he's a wise dog for sure. And uh, well, I wish you and Doctor and, and Dog Fauci in this case, not Doctor Fauci. I wish you both all the best, and we look forward to seeing much more of you in times to come. Thank, Thank you, Congresswoman Chile. It's been great having you on board. Thank you. And now as uh, the UNITE Summit comes to a close, um, I would like to call to, to the stage the people that made it possible. The UNITE Secretariat has been working around the clock for months to make sure that for two full days, we were able to bring the world together into one digital space. We wanted to do it face to face, but it was not possible given the COVID-19 pandemic. So I call to the stage, to the physical stage, um, the core team of the Secretariat, uh, UNITE's uh, executive director, who you have all met. Let me just put on my mask so I am compliant also. I'd like to call Victoria Gransalt, uh, executive director. I call on Philippe Marx, uh, our operations director and the person known to all speakers and most of our members around the world, uh, Amish Laksmides, who is responsible for partnerships and collaborations and managing our network around the world. Uh, they represent a huge team that is in the back office right now in multiple offices, having to deal with uh, people coming in from multiple parts of the world, 
having to deal with the COVID-19 restrictions. But without them, we would not be here today. Without them, the work that we do in, at Unite, translating uh, scientific evidence, best practices into concrete political action would not be possible. And as president of the Unite board, I am honored and humbled to be surrounded by so many brilliant young uh, entrepreneurs who are leading our network from our secretariat. So my special words of gratitude to all of you. Thank you. That being said, um, I, I would like to take this moment to, as we are coming to a close of this uh, two-day summit, to leave you all with five takeaways. But before that, just to say a special thank you to all of our sponsors, to all of those that from day number one have believed in us. For those like UNAIDS and the AIDS Healthcare Foundation who have been with UNITE uh, throughout these three years of existence, and we are sure we will continue to count with you, and so many other partners whose logos you can find on our website and at the Summit website. Without their support, we wouldn't be here today and we wouldn't be able to strive our, in completing our mission. Let me share then five takeaways to end this Unite Global Summit, Virtual Summit 2020. The first takeaway is that COVID-19 is a game changer. The, the current pandemic uh, presents itself as an extraordinary opportunity to reinforce, re redesign, and, re uh, <clears throat> and reinvest in the global health order. Investing in prevention and strategy um, will be uh, a safe investment, as this will lead to a world that will be more prepared to lead with global emergencies. The second takeaway is that we need a strategy for all the infectious diseases and to ensure no one is left behind. With this unprecedented crisis, the world responded with unprecedented uh, global solidarity. Such an approach is needed to respond to all of the non-COVID challenges that we are facing, be them communicable or non-communicable them, be them health, economic or social. The third takeaway is that science is the best shield we have for good health and well-being. Neglecting research and development is neglecting the future of our children and grandchildren. We need to create good research and investment environments to reach our goals. And the truth is we parliamentarians, members of parliament, senates and congresses, are at the interface between civil society, academia, private sector, international organizations, and of course, political power and governments whom we keep accountable to their actions. So it is in our power and in our hands to foster legislation that promotes collaborations between these multiple stakeholders. And we have the responsibility of translating scientific evidence and best practices to the, respond to the needs of the people. The fourth takeaway is that we also need uh, that we need also to turn threats into opportunities, responding to current and emerging infectious diseases. I will only mention a few, but HIV/AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, viral hepatitis, neglected tropical disease, and even waterborne diseases. We need to understand, especially now in the midst of this pandemic, where are we now in terms of each of these conditions and what is needed for us to move forward to respond adequately to the needs of the people in the real world, on the ground, starting off with those that are most vulnerable. Because health needs to be present in all policies, and we must have the budget to get the job done. Fifth and last takeaway is that health is at the front and center of global development. I can guarantee you, at this moment, there is nothing more important in the mind of legislators around the world than COVID-19. It became clear that health is not a cost, but it should be perceived as an investment. Moving forward, economic policies will no longer forget health and global health because health is a prerequisite for economies to survive and to thrive. So having said that, we need to make sure 
that we have the tools needed moving forward. And the truth is we are going to live very difficult times, not only regarding health, but also economic and social challenges around the world. And those in most vulnerable situations are the ones that will suffer the most. And to avoid that, we must act. So in the times of darkness that we foresee, the sustainable development goals should not be put aside as many have offered, but in times of darkness, we should use the sustainable development goals as a lighthouse to make sure that we do not lose track of where we need to go in the decade to come, to make sure that we do not forget those that are at the margins of society, those that are in most vulnerable situations, to make sure that we do not leave anyone behind. Humanity needs global solidarity to aspire to a better future. As parliamentarians, we are entrusted with the power and that power gives us the tremendous responsibility of making sure that we take that solidarity and translate it into concrete action. If we do so, working together through UNITE, through all of the different partnerships, working with all the stakeholders, making sure that we do our jobs properly, we can end infectious diseases as a global health threat. It's time to unite. Thank you for joining us for these two days at the UNITE Global Summit, Virtual Summit 2020. We will see you very soon. Let's join hands and make the world a bit safer and hopefully fight together for the well-being of our people. Thank you.